In this video, we're going to talk about Wonderware InTouch OMI, which is Wonderware's next generation HMI interface. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to run OMI in a read-only mode. There are a lot of times when we want to give an operator or a casual user an interface to the graphics that they have out there on the plant floor, but in a read-only mode. We don't want that person changing set points. We don't want that person starting and stopping motors or acknowledging alarms. It's for the casual observer to look and see what's going on in their processes without actually interacting with the process. So let's take a look at how this is done with InTouch OMI. So the normal method to kick off an OMI application is to run the Wonderware Application Manager and from there I pick the OMI application that I want to run. So I say to launch here and then once I'm in the OMI application I can drill down into the specific area that I want to go to using the, the menuing tool here. So I want to go to Paris, I want to go to storage, I'm going to go to building one, and I'm going to go pick say storage tank number three. And you can see I can click on a specific valve which is going to give me a faceplate, which will enable me to, say, put it into a hand mode, and then I can start and stop that. So before I do that, I'm going to log in, make sure that user has credentials. And then once I log in, I have the rights to be actually change some things. So I'm going to make sure that this thing is in a manual mode. And then right now you can see this valve is indeed open. If I click on close, that valve will close. You can see the status changes on the graphic. You can see it goes to a closed status within the faceplate. I can open that again now. If I want to open up that valve, you can see the status changes. So this is a full-blown read-write version of the application to give the operator full control. So the other thing I'm going to do here is look at the actual licensing that's associated with this InTouch OMI application. You can see there's something called a supervisory client that was consumed. When I opened up that InTouch OMI application, it used a supervisory client from my licensed server, which is a full-blown read-write version of the OMI application. So I shut down that OMI application. I'm going to do a refresh on my licensed server, and you should see this supervisory client will go away. It will get checked back in because it's no longer used. So the supervisory client was that license was returned back into the pool that could be used again from another client. So let's take a look at how we run the OMI application in a read-only mode. If we look back at the application manager, you're going to see a path of where the actual file is that actually runs the application. So if we browse to that application directory, you'll see something called view.exe. It's an application directory here that actually we're going to pass in the parameter of read only. So I created a shortcut on my desktop, point it to that directory we were just looking at, view.exe, and pass in the parameter of read only. And that will open up the OMI application in a read only mode. So let's give it a shot. So I'm double clicking on this icon here. It's opening up OMI, and this time it'll be in a read only mode. What you see on the screen here is I have multiple instances of the OMI application running. This is something different than our classic InTouch application where we can only run one instance on a specific desktop. Now we can run multiple instances of OMI on a desktop, which is great if you have a multi-monitor situation and you want to have a separate instance running in on, on another screen over there. But the top view here is I have the read-write application running here, and I still have the ability to go here and open and close the valve. You can see the status changes on the background of the read-only application. So the read-only application is running in this window, but I can't control. If I try to open and close that valve, there is no control. So just trying to demonstrate that functionality of, you know, the read-write running two separate instances of the OMI application on the same screen. One was open with the read-only flag, one was open the normal method, one has control, and one does not. So I closed down my full control OMI application now, so I only have the read-only instance running. So if I look at the license manager, you can see that the supervisory client read-only license was checked out. So when I run an OMI with that flag that I pass in as read-only, it's going to consume a read-only license. Well, thank you for watching today. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video, please contact me at the email address on the screen. Thanks again.